macOS 26.1 is officially available with a couple new features and changes and in this video we're going to be telling you all the new features and changes that you need to know. Isn't that right? Yeah? So it's okay? He's like whatever. After you update to this new version of macOS, if you go into your system settings and you go to the tab that talks about Apple Intelligence and Siri, under the language tab, I'm happy to let you know that now Apple Intelligence has expanded. So it supports Dutch, Portuguese, Danish, Norwegian, Swedish, and Chinese. And at the same time, if you go to the top of the Apple Intelligence window, you notice that this beta tag has now returned, indicating that it's still under testing or in the beta stages. Another change that's here with this update has to do with the Apple TV and this change actually affects the Apple TV box, the Apple TV app and the Apple TV subscription service. And the reason I say this is because now if we go into the apps tab and go to the Apple TV app right here. So if you open this app, you can see for some other services such as iOS and iPadOS and on the Apple TV itself, Apple has now officially rebranded or renamed the Apple TV Plus, their subscription service to just simply Apple TV. On the Mac app, it hasn't fully been changed. So you can see we still have the Plus tab, but you can see this also needs to be updated to just reflect the new rebranding or renaming to just Apple TV and no longer Apple TV Plus. So this is a change that you're going to see tech effect on your Apple TV box, iOS, once you update to the latest 26.1 versions of updates that are going to be released alongside this and this comes with a vibrant new identity now if you look at the apple tv app icon this has been updated so the app icon now has more of a visual representation that shows multiple variations or color combinations so you can see the before where the colors were just plain and it was pretty much black and gray but now you can see how this looks it's more of a visual change on the app icon and a rebranding of the apple tv services so now we actually have three things that are called apple tv so you buy the apple tv to open the apple tv to watch apple tv on your apple tv that seems to be the new change that Apple has now made with these updates. One of my favorite feature that this update actually brings to the Mac is a good one. And it also shows that Apple listens to feedback submitted by different users. So now after you update and you go into your system settings and under the appearance tab you can see there's a new option for liquid glass that allows you to choose your preferred look for liquid glass so now you have two options that you can choose from so one of the options you see right there is clear and the other is tinted and you can sort of see how this affects for example, the settings window right here. So this is how cleared looked. And I think if I go into the light mode, you might be able to see this slightly a little bit better. So you can see how clear looks. And then if I go to tinted, you can see how it affects this window and how it also like um, affects these arrows that you see right here. So this is how clear looks. And then tinted sort of darkens things a little bit so that you are able to see your way around. And it doesn't just affect this. So it affects different UI elements. For example, one of my favorite apps I like to demo this with is the Apple Music app. So now if I uh, was to go and select a different look, this is how clear looks. And just look at this uh, window tab right here, the media control tab. So you can see you, you are able to make a little bit like this scorpion that's there. You can sort of see it even when I scroll up and down and this is on clear. And then when I go to tinted, they always sort of takes a few seconds, but look at the difference it makes. So I I can't really make out what's on top right there. And then if I go to clear, you can sort of make out what it is. It's not as clear as what we had with Mac OS 26, like beta one when liquid glass was first announced. It's some sort of frosted 
clear option that's here but at least apple now gives users the option to choose the between clear and tinted option for better visibility that fits different users i think what would be a better solution from apple to solve this clear slash frosted option for visibility issues when it comes to liquid glass is to give users the ability to be able to choose how clear or how frosted the ui looks so like something like this made by the minimal nerd would be more ideal where you have a slider that's going all the way from the liquid glass or the most clearless option being on the left end and the frosted one being on the other end and you have a slider that you are adjusting and as you adjust this you can see how this affects the ui the clear option right there is almost like a hundred percent clear but then visibility wise it gets affected so it would allow users to fine tune the option or the midpoint which works best for them apple if you're watching i think this would be a good feature to bring in the next mac os 26.2 update something else that's new with this update has to do with a new app that came to the mac with mac os 26 and it's the phone app now when you open it and you go to your keypad you can see now this has a new liquid glass theme adopting the new fresh mac os 26 design before it was just plain and frosted you can sort of see you know my friend right here in the background you see how his face makes out and his body like shape looks so now you have some sort of uh, liquid glass theme and when you press the buttons you do see a little bit of light reflections right there showing the new liquid glass design also the external hard drive icon has adopted a new mac os 26 design so here you can see how it looked before and how it looks after updating to mac os 26.1 it now looks more of like an enclosed ssd as opposed to the previous drive that had multiple different poles another change as well that's here has to do with the widgets so now you can see the widgets that are available adopt the ui look that's set into the display preferences so now for example if i go into the dark mode you can see the widget right here adopts the same dark mode unlike before where your ui would be dark mode or the widget stays into like light mode that auto switching feature wasn't working properly it still isn't a hundred 100% fixed like for example for some widgets like the clock widget I noticed that certain part of it is in the dark mode while others are still in light mode and then sometimes when you add it to your screen and you hover over it or you click on it just like this then it goes into the dark mode just like this only when i click on it then it adopts the full dark mode um, widget look which is sort of a bug at this point in time but there's many other widgets that now uh, adopt this new auto system look that automatically switches whether it's dark mode and light mode another change you notice after updating has to do with the apps window now this doesn't necessarily replace launchpad but it makes launchpad a little bit redundant but one of the changes that you can see right here with the apps window is that now they seem to have expanded the grid view that you see right here so the amount of apps that you have in the same line has been expanded and at the same time there's like different app changes like one that i mentioned is the apple tv also the siri icon has been slightly changed when it comes to the color the music app icon has also changed and also this apps window when you update to mac os 26.1 at least in my case still experienced a little bit of the indexing issue where it indexes for a couple of minutes while launchpad never actually used to do that while launchpad would take the whole screen but it never used to index and it never used to use a lot of system results in the activity tab while this apps window seems to do that more often and with this update I did experience it a little bit after I updated to it another change that's here with this update has to do with the Apple music which I'm in right now so when you open your Apple music app and go to the playback setting under song transition if you check mark this song transition option you have two options that you can choose from which is auto mix and crossfade crossfade was always existing but auto mix is a new feature that's here with mac os 26 and now with this mac os 26.1 Apple Music Auto Mix feature now works via AirPlay as well, which should add smoother transitions during AirPlay playback. And 
should enhance the user experience as well. Another new change that this update introduces has to do with FaceTime, which I actually have open right now. So this is the app that open. And according to the release notes of this update, FaceTime audio reliability has been improved. So now you should get better audio quality under low bandwidth condition after you update to this new Mac OS 26.1 update. So not sure how that's going to work hand in hand with like uh, network performance issues, but irregardless of whether you have good bandwidth or low bandwidth, according to the release notes, you should be able to get better audio quality. This update also includes a privacy and security improvement. So now when you go into your settings and go to the sensitive content, there's a change when it comes to communication safety default. So now content filters limit adult websites by default for ages 13 to 17, although this age range varies by region. And this is something that's going to be owned by default if it's a device that's for someone between those age ranges varying by region of course that's pretty much most of the changes that are here when it comes to mac os 26.1 this update is by no means perfect but i know a lot of users especially ones that are concerned about compatibility issues when it comes to different third-party apps they hold off on updating to a big update like mac os 26.0 and actually wait for the first pointed update and even sometimes the second pointed update so a lot of users skip the first or the first two updates and this one is by no means perfect but it's much better than what we had with the initial release of mac os 26.0 it improves more app compatibility with mac os tahoe and it does have two bugs which are still existing at this point in time actually three bugs because when i open my apps window and search for app, for apps it doesn't actually show the apps and there's some issues that are there when it comes to the alarm that may not always display while or using your mac and some memory management still persists especially after you update a significant update like this one but other than that it seems to be a pretty good update so far from the few days that i've been testing it now that's it for me for now if you like this video leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one and in this video we're going to be telling you and can i talk please